Hello friends. Did you know, that nearly 2000 years ago, a secret society was formed in India, that has been attracting the attention of not only Indians, but of people all around the world. Who formed this organization and what was the reason behind its formation, and more importantly, did this secret society really exist, or is it just a myth? If you want to know the answers, watch this video till the end. So, let's begin. I am sure all of you, have seen many secret societies in the spy movies, all around the world, with agents working under complete secrecy. You must have wondered, if such organizations really exist. You will be surprised to know, that secret societies had been the integral part of all civilizations, since the ancient times. The Greeks had their Eleusis, the Chinese had the White Lotus, the Islamic states, had their assassins, and India too had its own society, known as the Nine Unknown Men. These organizations worked in complete secrecy, with an air of mystery, and intrigue around them. The members of these organizations were chosen very carefully, from various walks of life, who were ready to dedicate their lives, for a greater purpose, and serve mankind till their last breath. To know about the Nine Unknown Men of India, we have to go back nearly 2000 years ago, to 260 BC, when Ashoka, one of the most famous and powerful rulers of India, came to power. Ashoka, the third and probably the most efficient and powerful ruler of the Mauryan dynasty, ascended the throne, after the death of his father, Bindusara. Ashoka was a very ambitious ruler, he wanted to expand his kingdom to such an extent, that it becomes one of the largest empires in India. To fulfill his ambition, he went on a ruthless rampage to conquer any kingdom that he could lay his eyes on, leaving a trail of blood and destruction wherever he went. Knowing Ashoka's humongous military strength, most kingdoms surrendered, and those who were brave enough to challenge him, were completely decimated. It was this conquest of Ashoka, that ultimately took him to Kalinga, present-day Orissa. The Battle of Kalinga was so devastating, that it shocked even a cruel and ruthless king like Ashoka, to his very core, thus becoming the turning point of his life. Kalinga was a part of Magadha during the reign of Mahapadma, the founder of Nanda dynasty. It seceded from Magadha, after Nanda dynasty fell, due to the revolt of Chandragupta Maurya and Chanakya. Even after coming to power, neither Chandragupta, nor his son Bindusara, tried to claim Kalinga. Thus Kalinga flourished into one of the most prosperous territory of that time. Although his predecessors did not try to conquer Kalinga, but for Ashoka, capturing Kalinga was quite necessary, to fulfill his grand plan. Ashoka sent his messenger to King of Kalinga, Ananta Padmanabha, asking to submit and surrender, and become a subordinate of the Mauryan Empire, but King Ananta refused and chose to defend his kingdom, thus making the Battle of Kalinga, inevitable. So, in the year 261 BC, Ashoka raided Kalinga with his huge army. The soldiers of Kalinga put on a great fight, but they were no match to Ashoka's military power. Although the exact duration of the war is not known, but it is estimated to have continued, for about a year. Although both Ashoka and Ananta Padmanabha were not willing to back down, but the consequence of this war, was something that neither of them had anticipated. Nearly a hundred thousand soldiers lost their lives, and another hundred and fifty thousand soldiers, succumbed to their injuries, in captivity. The devastative nature of this war shook Ashoka completely. He decided to give up the path of violence and conquest forever, and dedicate the rest of his life, for the betterment of mankind. Ashoka adopted Buddhism and, from a ruthless conqueror, he became a messenger of peace, although there is some conflict among the historians, regarding Ashoka's conversion to Buddhism. Some historians believe Ashoka had converted to Buddhism, long before the Kalinga War. In his conquest of peace and spirituality, Ashoka studied many ancient Indian texts, and scriptures. 
he was amazed by the vastness of the knowledge and wisdom that India had since the earliest of times. He realized that this knowledge needed to be preserved and propagated properly, and at any cost it should not fall into wrong hands, because, if used for the fulfillment of one's greed, it would definitely result in utter chaos. So he decided to form an organization, with some of his most trusted individuals dot who would be entitled with the responsibility of preserving this vast ocean of knowledge. Thus, the secret society of the nine unknown men was founded. Each of the members of this society was very carefully chosen, who had an expertise in certain fields, like physiology, microbiology, cosmogony, and so on. These men studied the existing informations in the ancient texts, they further researched on them, to put them to the most efficient use. They are believed to have written various books based on their research, like the Vimanaka Shastra, that deals in aeronautics and space travel. There are numerous legends, regarding the achievements of the nine unknown men. Pope Sylvester II, the Pope of France, was believed to have traveled to India, on a secret expedition, to meet the nine unknown men. During this meeting, along with many other valuable informations of various fields, the Pope learned to make a bronze head too, that could answer yes or no questions. This talking head worked in a system that is similar to the binary system of today. I guess you all know of Alexandra Yersin, the Swiss pastorian, who saved the world from cholera and plague. But did you know that he traveled to Madras, present-day Chennai, to meet the descendants of the nine unknown men, and learned about immune toxin that could be used to treat cholera? It is also believed that Hitler was so impressed by the legend of the nine unknown men that he wanted to get hold of the knowledge acquired by them so that he could use them in warfare during the Second World War. Fortunately, he did not succeed in his mission. Can you just imagine? How much more devastation this man would have caused had he got hold of what he desired. Louis Jacolliot, a French barrister, lecturer, and author, who lived in India for several years, claimed that the water of Ganga, the holy river in India, remains pure despite millions of pilgrims suffering from various infectious diseases, taking a dip in it every day. He believed that it may be because of some sterilization technique involving radiation, that Indians might have discovered long before modern science had even considered it. In his book, The Occult Science of India, Louis expressed his belief in the involvement of the Nine Unknown, in the development of such a technique. Legima, another concept that the Nine Unknown worked on, was a physiological phenomena that allows humans to defy gravity. When some of the books related to this topic were discovered in Tibet, modern Indian scientists were unwilling to take anti-gravitational theories seriously, but on the contrary, the Chinese believed that there is lot of potential in this particular field. The Sanskrit manuscripts discovered in Lhasa, containing instructions of building interstellar ships, or the ancient Indian scripts found in Afghanistan that contains the description of Vimana, indicates that the Nine Unknown had preserved knowledge on gravity, aerodynamics, and space travel. Amsu Bodini, the writings on palm leaves, discovered in Karnataka, a southern state of India, contains information regarding many scientific discoveries made in the past, in India, such as identification of the colors of sun rays, or interstellar travel, or even communication with the extraterrestrial. As I told you, there are numerous legends, related to this unknown mysterious society. But now the question arises, did this secret organization really exist? Or is it all just a myth? There are some people who supported the legitimacy of this organization. In 1923, Talbot Munday, an English author, published a book on the nine unknown men of Ashoka. In 1960, Jackie's Bergia and Louis Powell's claimed that Ashoka's secret organization did actually exist. They even wrote about Pope Sylvester's visit to India in their book, The Morning of the Magicians. So friends, what do you think about this secret society? Do you believe that such an organization really existed? 
Or do you think, it's all just stories and myths? Whatever you think, let us know in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this. That's all for today, see you on the next one, bye.